Um, October was a very exciting month for commuters and people in the city of Santon and all around Joburg as well because it was all about Eco-Mobility Week which is trying to get us all to try and look at a greener way, right, and developing infrastructure around that. Now, uh, Monica Zimmerman, who's the Deputy Secretary General of the ICLEI, which is the Local Government for Sustainability, said the festival was a highly ambitious and very successful endeavour which allowed citizens to be part of an eco-mobile lifestyle and helped to change the mobility infrastructure and patterns in the city. But in pursuit of this greener world, we wanted to find out which one is faster, the e-bike or just e-bike? That one, I jog. Our cities are increasing in size on a daily basis, but our needs for mobility still have to be met. Thankfully, there are new and exciting options popping up all around the country. Now, hot off the heels of Santon's Eco Mobility Month, we're testing out the electric bike against a normal bicycle to see how geared up we are towards eco mobility and to gauge the benefits of both bikes. Graham will be putting his fitness to the test by making use of a regular pedal power bicycle while Leanne goes high tech on the electric bicycle. I think we need to have a little bit of a race to see which bike is better. Okay, I accept your challenge. Just give me like two or three kilometers head start. Let's go. Man, I'm being made to work for it, but I'm loving every second of it. Just looking around, it seems that the world of the commuter is being transformed quite dramatically with bike lanes being integrated into most of our major cities. You've also got really cool initiatives like the hashtag Cycle the City, which allows us to discover and explore safe, short cycle routes in and around the city in our suburbs, sharing in the knowledge of more seasoned cyclists and commuters. <sighs> I think I can use a few tips on fitness as well. An e-bike is just like any bike that you would have in your garage, except this one has a mid-motor over there, it's got a battery, it's got an electric controller unit, and of course, a throttle. You ride this like you would ride any bike, pedaling at all, well, most of the time. But when you need that extra boost of power, especially when going uphill, that's when you activate the throttle. I think I've given Graham enough of a head start. It's time to win this thing. Cyclists can now also bring their bikes aboard the My City buses and Metro Rail trains as part of a mutually beneficial strategy which encourages greater use of public transport and cycling. These options are an efficient alternative if there's sudden bad weather, where trips are quite long, or to bridge the gaps in the cycleway network. Woo! Now that was incredible! The commute with an electronic bike is amazing. It's quick, it's easy, so comfortable, you hardly break a sweat, the bike does all the work for you. And uphill cycling nailed it i love it regardless of what kind of bicycle you use the benefits remain the same it's vastly cheaper than driving there's no traffic and parking is never a problem finally oh sorry to keep you waiting man that was a blast i know i made it look like hard work but it was actually a huge amount of fun I think I've been inspired to set the car aside a couple of days a week and just use a bike, but I might ask Leanne for a bit of a swap on the bike, so what a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Oh, well done. Well done. Hey? You know what, G? I may have won today, <laughs> but I think cycling was the real winner. No, you were the winner. Aww. You killed me, man. You Let's killed me. Let's just enjoy the view. <laughs> I think I might need a toe on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh, I say it all together. Oh, shame. Well, gracious in defeat, I have to say that Leanne really did kick my butt that day, but she did have a lot of help. And I think a man who is a really a driving force behind the e-bike revolution, Leonard Stock, now joins us, who I think had a lot of pleasure watching the bike beat e-bike, in my case. <laughs> um, what an incredible day, what a wonderful experience. The proof is in the pudding. Leanne clearly did have an edge there. How popular are these e-bikes becoming? Is this a new trend? Is this something that's already taken hold of South Africa or maybe the world? Well, South Africa uh, has, has had limited penetration, probably in the low thousands. But if you look around the world, uh, if you look at Tel Aviv, Israel, you're looking at over 200,000. If you look at Europe, you're probably looking around a million. But if you look at sure. China, you're looking at about 200 million. Uh, those are the latest estimates. Uh, obviously, India, huge amounts as well. Um, the, the need for it is certainly understandable when you look at our larger metropolitan areas. Are we up to date with the legislation that we need to be able to ride these guys in a commuter sense? Okay, so the legislation is a bit ambiguous at the moment. Uh, the Motor Vehicle Act says uh, that any bicycle with a motor is a motor vehicle and you need a licence. However, the so South African Bureau of Standards says that any bicycle with an electric motor of 250 watts or less and not capable of doing more than 25 kilometers an hour on the flat without assistance 
is not uh, a motor vehicle, so you don't need a license. So a bit of ambiguity there. Are we moving in the right direction? Do you see th that shift coming? I think uh, the shift is coming, but I think it's... Uh, South Africa really needs to, uh, to embrace a, a cycling culture per se. So if you compare South Africa to some of the overseas countries, if you look at Copenhagen, for instance, you're looking at over 50% of the population commutes to work or study by bicycle. Wow. Over 60% of the parliamentarians in Copenhagen commute to work on a bicycle. So that's a completely different culture from what we've got. Um, but as the culture embraces cycling, uh, I think it will take it will off. Start. And of course, a major driving force is cost involved. We know there's an initial outlay, yes, but of course then the costs do come down drastically. Um, how can this save you money in your mind? All right, so the cost of an e-bike per kilometre is probably around 10 cents, just rounding it off. Uh, and that includes the cost of acquiring a new battery after about two and a half years. Okay. Compared to the cost of probably the smallest car, a thousand cc's, uh, at over a rand. Sure. So that is a direct cost, but then for commuters, you've got to look at other costs like um, like parking yeah. uh, and uh, uh, yeah, basically parking. Yeah, and when stuff those travel times are, are more than doubled yeah. because of two hours in yeah, the traffic absolutely. in the morning, um, who is taking up the e-bike challenge? Who is riding these bikes? Is it a young? Is it an old? When you talk about that culture, who's embracing it? Well, we were a bit surprised. We thought it was going to be just a, a young market, a sort of a hip market riding. Uh, retro bikes and things like that, but we've been quite surprised how it's been across the, the, the board. We've got, we've got people from in their 20s right up to people in their 70s. We've got people who are on crutches after severe motor car accidents who are using e-bikes as a way of getting back into cycling. Unbelievable stuff. Well, the proof really is in the pudding. Thank you so much. I was well and truly beaten on the day, <laughs> but we did have an absolute blast. Um, whether you choose to go the old human-powered route or with a new e-bike, um, the reality is that we need to start finding new ways of commuting. But thanking Leonard so much for joining us and for giving us a great day out. Cass?